According to the Geneva Academy, the world is facing more than 100 conflicts worldwide. The data are scary, considering that we have crucial organizations like the UN with the role of preventing tension and conflict between countries. So, at this point, we have to ask ourselves why so many conflicts are destroying life, economy and peace worldwide. Today we will explain the fundamental topics to build a better world. But first, it's essential to understand the following. What is geopolitics? What is the role of the UN and the superpower? And how sovereignty, unfortunately, is just an abstract idea. Please take the time to watch the whole video. We promise you will learn a new perspective and essential principle of international politics. As usual, on political affair, something that the media won't easily tell you. So, what is geopolitics? Geopolitics is a way of studying foreign policies and their strategic and economic interests in specific area and possibly preventing conflict. But in particular, international relationship between countries sharing their border, water and diplomatic history. And this is the beautiful theory. Now, unfortunately, we have to talk about the sad reality. Let's start saying that not all the nations are equal. Let's talk about superpowers. The 2022 Ukraine conflict taught us the importance of sovereignty, democracy and respect of the integrity of the borders. We are using Ukraine as an example, but all of this logic applies to all of the other 100 conflicts we mentioned previously. Now we have Ukraine, an independent country under attack because two superpowers are fighting a proxy war to control it, Russia and the United States. So let's apply geopolitics to our example. But first, why are Russia and America superpowers and not Ukraine? Russia and the United States contributed to found the UN in 1945, together with the United Kingdom, France and China. They have veto power at the UN and they are permanent members. It means that those countries vote for any decision that can influence politics around the world. So if one of those nations decide to use veto, the UN can't approve any resolution. But they are also economic superpowers. They control region and country worldwide. And they have the most extensive number of nuclear weapons. In a few lines, we are trying to explain that not all the countries around the world are equal. This is crucial to understand how politics works. So let's continue with our analysis. Ukraine share border and history with Russia. They are neighbor with a problematic past and a tragic present. However, thousands of Russians live in Ukraine and vice versa. And as we know, since the end of World War II, Russia controlled Ukraine politically. The Ukrainian president Yanukovych, uh, democratically elected in 2010, was the last president close to Russia. At that time, Crimea was part of uh, Ukraine. We didn't have a war in Donbas, and the two countries share interests and international affairs. But most importantly, Ukrainian had peace. So, what broke the peace in Ukraine? A part of the Ukrainian population wanted to join the European Union, and some of them also NATO. The situation put Yanukovych in a difficult position. On the one hand, he had to listen to his population. On the other hand, he had to work with President Putin to avoid the issue with Russia. We will see how sovereignty is a fragile world in the world of politics. At this point, most of our reader and watcher will reply by saying that Russia doesn't have any right to interfere in Ukraine's decision. And this is theoretically correct, but let us explain it, because politics is never simple. The European and NATO spirit didn't develop by itself. Instead, the European Union and the United States began founding the Democratic Revolution. Memorable is the speech provided by Guy Verhofstadt in 2014. He was in Ukraine advocating for a European Ukraine in Maidan Square. He announced a sanction against the Yanukovych government, unofficially, because Yanukovych didn't join the EU. The official version, instead, is that the Ukrainian government were using force to shut down the protest. If we think for a moment, the European Union punished Yanukovych for not doing what they wanted. Yes, poor sovereignty. And the United States in 2013 
say that they were in Ukraine just to support a just cause, the sovereign right of Ukraine to make their own decision, as Senator John McCain said in 2013. So we have one question for you. Who does represent sovereignty? Is sovereignty represented by a bunch of people protesting on the street, or instead by the democratically elected government in charge? Why couldn't those Ukraine just wait for the next election to change their government? We think because the West feared that the democratic election wouldn't bring the result they expected. For the United States and the European Union, the people on the road means more, more than a democratic elected government. And we understand them if we think how much money they put on funding this project. But this is not fair for the million of people who voted for Yanukovych in 2010. And those are the people of Crimea and Donbass in particular, region close to Russia. We are starting to see the dangers of interference in other business. Now, it's essential to understand that the superpower, the United States, interfered in what was a geopolitical and strategic ally of Russia, another superpower. Such interference may cause wars, as unfortunately we are witnessing. Russia is now fighting to protect its geopolitical interest, and perhaps its existence. But this is a topic for another video. Is this right? War is never right, as well as the interference from other countries. In our opinion, it's the same. Does all of this remind you of the 2022 Taiwan escalation? Same actor in the West, new protagonist in the East, China. Again, people oppressed by the Chinese government looking for democracy and freedom. Old stories, same technique. Fortunately, with the latest regional election, Taiwanese people reminded to the world that this is not true. But especially the Taiwanese don't want to become the new Syrian or Ukrainian killed by questionable politicians. Oh yes, Syria. We often forget. This is the hypocrisy of sovereignty and democracy. We say so because the last time Russia tried to put missile in Cuba, it almost caused the World War III that will end the world. But let us tell you something really incredible. We know that the West's propaganda and opinion are that Russia has no right to interfere in Ukrainian choices. But at this point, someone should explain why, after one month Putin invaded Ukraine in 2022, the United States threatened to invade Solomon Island because they wanted to start a cooperation with China. According to the Biden administration, Ukraine has the right to make its own choice, but unfortunately, the Solomon Island, no. We call it hypocrisy. What's your opinion? Let's also add, to be politically fair, that China, without using military, is taking control of vast region worldwide, using the most powerful weapon, diplomacy. But of course, in this way, it's going to challenge other countries, like the United States, and it won't contribute to deliver peace to the world. As we see, we are witnessing a very challenging way to maintain balance and peace worldwide. So what can we do to have a better world? The first secret to keep peace is not interfering in other superpower business. As we are seeing, sovereignty and democracy are just words often abused by questionable politicians. In an ideal world, every country should have the right to decide its own future. But, as we can see, superpowers determine their destiny. But unfortunately, in the name of their own strategic interests, and not according to the noble principle of freedom and democracy, as they try to convince us with an embarrassing propaganda. If you listen to President Trump in 2018, link in the description, giving instruction to the head of NATO, Stoltenberg, he clearly said that Germany and the European Union must stop business with Russia, and they must increase their NATO military budget. And this four years before Putin invaded Ukraine. As you see publicly, the United States dictate to the European Union what they have to do. Why? Because the United States, through NATO, control the whole European Union, and they protect Europe from a possible invasion coming from Russia. Fantasies. But the Biden administration 
four years later, accomplished those goals by taking an advantage of the Ukraine conflict. At least this war help America reaching their goal. Sovereignty, as we are witnessing, is just a myth. Probably reforming the United Nations may be the solution. The five permanent members and their veto power don't work anymore. Those countries have interests that often cross each other. It's crucial to understand another point. After World War II, we had clear rules where superpower must not interfere in countries controlled by another superpower. Russia, for example, could never partner with Italy, even if the Communist Party in Italy got its 30% of vote. The United States was closely watching. In the same way, the United States could never even think to support the democracy in the Ukraine of the Soviet Union. It will cause a World War III. We hope you are starting to understand the total confusion we are living right now. These are the rule of war to keep peace worldwide. If the United States would have decided to support independence or democracy in Ukraine during the era of the Soviet Union, World War III would have started. Why now it became acceptable? Russia is still a superpower with all the rights the Soviet Union had before. Those rules must remain in place to avoid a nuclear confrontation. Also, it's just common sense. After the Ukrainian conflict, the war will be split again. We will have NATO and its European alliance. And on the other side, we will have BRICS. The dollars will have a new competitor, a new currency that the BRICS are just creating right now. This is a colossal failure of diplomacy moved by dirty interest. Those politicians aren't working for peace, but to fool wars. Syria, Yemen, Taiwan, are just the last famous episodes. The world needs balance and peace. Policies to boost economic trade and economies. But unfortunately, the superpower are destroying the world. The ideal world is politically fair. In an ideal world, the UN must include all the countries. No one must have veto power. And each country vote should produce the final resolution. That's the democracy that can guarantee peace worldwide. But let's leave our fantasy world. In fact, we have another dirty secret to confess you. Now, even during the UN Council votes, superpower influence how other nations should cast their vote. If they refuse, those countries may face sanction or other action that will destroy their economy. In reality, politics has lost its noble purpose of developing country and supporting people. Instead, politics focuses now in making rich people richer and spreading corruption instead of noble values and development. So, every man for himself, or let's work together to build a better world that is much more politically fair. The future and the decision are up to us. History will judge us. My name is Giovanni Basta, and this was Politically Fair. If you are passionate about politics, international affairs, consider to subscribe to our channel. New stories are coming soon. Like the video if you like it and let us know your opinion. We hope our video helps you to better understand how a war can be started or prevented. See you in the next video with a new story.